So today's video is about M60, Messier 60. It's this big elliptical galaxy here. It lives in the Virgo cluster of galaxies and right next to it is this giant spiral which is NGC 4647. There's a big debate about whether or not these two galaxies which make up the peculiar pair known as ARP 116 if they're actually interacting with each other. If you look at them they look like they're overlapping but if they're interacting then you would get some kind of like tidal interactions, some gravitational interactions between the two. But actually, today I don't want to talk about this interaction. I want to talk about this little guy down here. This is M60 UCD1. And today I've got this paper here about it. It's called The Densest Galaxy, published in 2013. M60 UCD1 is an ultra compact dwarf. This just means that there's a lot of stars packed into this tiny little structure. At the time of this paper in 2013, people weren't really sure if they were massive star clusters or if they were galaxies. And if they're galaxies, then that's something really, really interesting because it's not clear how such a dense galaxy could form. Would it be directly forming in a dark matter halo? Or did this used to be a normal galaxy that has been stripped away all of its gas and its stars, leaving this dense structure? So the guys in this paper, they measured the V-band luminosity of this object. And at the time, this was the brightest ultra compact dwarf that had ever been found. And so in their first plot of this paper, you can see the giant elliptical M60 galaxy. And down in this bottom corner here is M60 UCD1. For comparison, they also show you an ultra compact dwarf up here, a normal one. And you can see how much brighter and bigger it looks than this normal one. The radius of this dwarf galaxy is given by the half light radius. So this is the radius of like a circle that encompasses like all of the light of the galaxy. And so if you know the radius, you essentially know like kind of the area that the galaxy like covers and you can plot the luminosity against the luminosity density. And this is basically the luminosity that's normalized by the area that the galaxy covers. So on this left hand side, you've got all these globular clusters and you can see that they span like a huge range in luminosity density. The larger points are galaxies. You can see they're much more luminous, but they're not as dense. So M60 UCD1 sits up here. And from this plot, you can see that M60 UCD1 is not the most dense object that we know of. There's plenty of globular clusters that are more dense in stars than this object. But in comparison to galaxies, it's the most dense galaxy. If you look at this galaxy in x-rays, what you'll see is a very bright x-ray source. This is evidence that there's a supermassive black hole at the center of this galaxy. What is also really interesting is that you can measure the um, mass of this galaxy by looking at the velocity dispersion of the stars. So this is how spread out the velocities of the stars are moving. So if you have a large velocity dispersion, that means you need a lot of gravity to hold all the stars together. And that means you've got more mass in this galaxy. So if you've got the mass of this ultra compact dwarf, you'll find that the supermassive black hole at the center of this galaxy is 10 to 15% of the total mass of this galaxy. It's huge. And that means that there's no way that this supermassive black hole could have formed at the center of this tiny dwarf galaxy. So the enormous amount of mass, the presence of this supermassive black hole, and kind of its structural properties all suggest that it was formed by tidal gravitational interactions. M60 is so close and so large. And so currently the leading theory is that this used to be a normal galaxy with of order 10 billion stars. And at some point it just got too close to M60 that it got stripped of all its gas and stars from the outer region and that got all absorbed to make this even massive elliptical galaxy of M60. Does that mean when I look at M60, some of the light, some of the stars I'm seeing are coming from stars that it stole from 
UCD1? Absolutely. So it's likely that it's stolen a lot of stars and matter from a lot of the surrounding objects. Usually when you have interactions between two galaxies, there's lots of scenarios of what could be happening. One scenario that I like the sound of is called cannibalism. That's when you get a really massive galaxy and a much smaller galaxy comes by it. It will completely consume all the stars and all the matter, merging it into one. I think it's really interesting to like look um, at galaxies in the sky and just think like how long ago things happen because when we're looking into the sky we're looking back in time. I kind of feel bad about M60 now though. I look at it and I think it's kind of like a bully or a bit of a thief. <laughs> <laughs> Is that yeah. stupid? No, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the thief galaxy? The bully galaxy? We need to come up with a good name. UCD1's got a name, hasn't it? The densest galaxy. The densest galaxy. It's not the densest galaxy anymore. It's been dethroned because this was a paper from 2013. Oh. But um, since then, um, two other galaxies have beat it. I'm sorry it's not the densest anymore. No, that's but funny. science progresses and we find more things. <laughs> it's a funnier title calling a video the third densest galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> of galaxy formation. So they're really, really old. They're comparable to the age of the universe, sort of 10 billion years upwards. And they're really the records of some of the, the, the earliest moments of, of galaxy formation. That's why you do the astronomy, after all. It's not going to make you rich. It's not going to make you famous. It's not going to get your girls. Didn't work for me.